Welcome back. Barista Ismail, what do you think of the process that um, made Senator Bukola Saraki the Senate President and um, um, Yakubu Dogara the Speaker of the House of Reps? Yeah, I think there are two different, uh, two different scenarios in the Senate and in the, in the House of Representatives. Uh, for the Senate, I think uh, 51 senators were absent as at that time. Uh, they said according to the rules that the quorum was formed, you know, by uh, one third of the entirety uh, of the Senate. So I think uh, if you go according to the rules, I think it's a constitutional process, like the president said, has somewhat uh, been followed. Uh, but would that, is that what we had wanted it to be? In the sense that 51, that's close to half. Of, of the senators to be absent. No, that's not what we would have wanted it to be. We would have wanted it to be um, uh, full membership, all the senators being present, so that they'll be able to express their legitimate right of voting of who their presiding officer is and uh, who his deputy would be. I think the tragedy of that election was uh, the election of the deputy senate president who happens to be a PDP member, unprecedented in the history of politics in this country. Um, certainly something that... Uh, Do you feel had done by that you, you fought yeah, for an yeah, APC I, I, government I think, to I think so. I think, and I you're think, handing um, over key positions to members of I, the opposition? I think, I, think, I think, yeah, I think it was devastating. I think it was devastating. For me personally, it was, it was totally devastating. I couldn't believe what I was seeing on TV when I was watching it. I, I just couldn't believe it. Do you believe that this process because of the way it happened undermines the credibility of the Senate president? I don't know about this, the credibility of the Senate president. I'm not, uh, I can't speak for the, his credibility or not. Um, I think as an individual and a senator, he's credible enough. Uh, are we happy with the way things went by? No. Um, he has claimed that he has not gone into any deal with the opposition to undermine the party. Uh, that it happened uh, because uh, Do you happened. believe him? I don't, I don't think the issue is whether or not I believe him. The issue is um, it could have been worse on that day. If it is true that a quorum was going to be formed by one third of 109 senators and the PDP had 49 senators, I think we were, as a party, we were arrogant in our victory to think that we had only 60 senators, one died of course, so we had 59 senators. There's a gap of only 10 senators between us and PDP that we could just take a lot of things for granted. I was angry at, at, at both the way it happened and the way you know, the party handled or managed the process from the beginning. I think it was totally avoidable. Um, uh, a 10 people margin was too slim for us to, to take anything for granted. Now, do you believe in the supremacy of the party, as has been reiterated by other members of the APC more recently, including the president? Absolutely. So how come the party doesn't seem able to enforce discipline? No, when you say supremacy of the party, you mean that every member of the party should respect the party's wishes. Yes. Now. Uh, and we have two examples of principal of officers no. who haven't. Oh, no, of course And from the be. outside, we're looking and we're thinking they haven't been punished for going against the party, apparently not once, but potentially twice in the case of uh, uh, Senator Saraki. Well, you see, um, I don't think we're at the level of, uh, we're at the stage of punishment yet. Why not? Because we still have crises that we have to take care of, first and foremost. We have, we have problems within the issue of the National Assembly leadership crisis. Uh, that has to be taken care of, first and foremost. Once that is done, I'm sure the party will take a decision on what to do on its air members. Now, before the elections, you, you had this to say about PDP members defecting to the APC. And again, I quote you. I believe everyone will agree with me that the PDP, even though it was badly formed, has further deteriorated, 
leaving this party for anyone, even just so you distance yourself from these vices, should be a welcome development. And at the APC, we welcome it. In the light of the leadership crisis taking place within the APC lawmakers, two of whom are PDP defectors, do you now think it was a wise decision for the APC to accept all comers? Was uh, it a wise decision to open your arms to everybody? And in the end, you still have other people who decamped as well with them that are fighting on behalf of the party right now. You have the former governor of Kano State, uh, Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso, who is also a defector from PDP, who stood up against Senator Saraiki as president because he wanted the party's line to be told. You have Senator Yerima Bakura of, of Zamfara, who is also a founding member, one of the legacy party leaders, who is fighting on behalf of Senator Saraiki. So the issue is not about defectors. So I don't you, think you, it you, is you about think defectors you alone. You took the right decision in welcoming everybody absolutely, into the party. Absolutely, absolutely. That helped us in winning the election. That is not a doubt. That is not in doubt. That helped us in winning the election. You know, the coalition helped us in winning the election. The problem is now you're in government. And people are looking at the APC, and it seems it's all about fighting and jostling for positions and relevance, and not really so much about the good governance that you promised Nigerians. Well, I think, yeah, that's, you see, you see that's, uh, that's, that's not entirely true. I think um, people are focusing on a negligible negative. No, you're making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's, uh, it's uh, because, because headlines are, are gone, our headlines always go for the bad news. That's, that's what headlines are all about. Um, uh, you hardly see that uh, a headline that says APC is doing well is going to, no, it's the bad news, the negligible negatives that are being portrayed and exposed as headlines. And I think there's so many, there's so much good that is going on. Are you on. saying that you do not understand that from the perspective of outsiders, crisis within the APC are an impediment. I think it's magnified. I think are it's an exaggerated. impediment to good governance. I because a crisis, time and attention is a, spent on these things no, rather than all the no, things. No, a lingering crisis, a lingering crisis that has the potential weight of bringing down the house. Yes, it's it's a problem in governance, but believe you me, uh, it's not going to be a problem. It's, it's magnified and it's been exaggerated. We'll take care of our own crisis, which is a little crisis, and we'll focus on governance. What is responsible for the delay in um, the naming of the president's staff, immediate staff, as well as the cabinet? I don't know about cab. The, the, the president is taking his time and um, Why? I think he's more, I think he's more concerned about getting the job done, not getting who to do the job. I think he has... Um, but he uh, can't do the job alone. No, he's not, he's not trying to. He's not trying to. Uh, you have to give it to the president. He has a lot of experience uh, as a former military general and head of state who has held different positions in the past before. And he was in a position where he has taken, what, two, 20, 30, 40 decisions in a day when he was a military head of state. And then the government crashed a year and a half later. Um, so I think coming with all that experience, and uh, knowing that a democracy is entirely different, you don't, ch you are not changing an institution. You're just basically changing the government. He needs to understand that a lot of things that he didn't have the privilege of understanding through the handover notes that was not given to him on time. You know, for him to study and know exactly where he's picking up from. So I think the president has just been careful. He's been measured. He's been very meticulous about it. Um, it sounds like the president is ruling alone. No, he's not. And he's a democratically elected no, president, no, and he has not. decided to no, just run the country no, all by he's himself. Not. In a democracy, you don't rule. In a democracy, you lead. And there are institutions that are still in place. There are pump sex and ministries, and there are, there are other officers that have not been fired yet. So what he's doing is then he's gathering all the thoughts and all the, the, the situation in Grand Fest to be able to know precisely what job to give to whom so that he knows he was going to hold that person to account for the job he's given him. Do we know how long he needs to study for? I think it's too soon. Soon? Very soon. What, soon can be two weeks? <laughs> it can be ten weeks? Well, I can't it give can you a specific date if that's what you're looking for. I cannot give you a specific time. 
if that's what you're but looking do, do for. But do you understand Nigerians who will be concerned about the fact that 40 plus days, I mean, maybe even longer, because we don't know when this will end, we have an elected president who on the outside seems to be taking decisions without, you know, we, 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 with shadowy figures. Because we don't know who is advising him, so they, we can't hold them to account. We, we don't know anything that's going on. All we hear is that this is happening and that is happening. But something is happening. And there's no cabinet to hold people to account. So you, you, you know, no, in a, a government people, a lot, that is A lot elected, of presidents before take their time before they give cabinets. I don't think the cabinets are an issue. The cabinets would come, uh, definitely. Uh, uh, we're not going to we're not going to linger into in this. Is it true that it possible. is the APC crisis that is impacting on his ability to name a cabinet that is because not true. of the power that, struggles that is, that within is, the different factions who that are is, lobbying no, for that positions? Is not true. Absolutely not true. Now the handful of appointments he's made so far um, have led to accusations of northern bias. People have a point, don't they? No, I don't think they have a point, but I can understand the perception. I can understand the perception because this is a country that is uh, embedded in deep mistrust of, of ethnicity, originalism. So I can understand that. And most of this appointment... But not, if he knows not, that... Not most of this appointment. If some he of this knows that, why isn't he being sensitive to these things no, and see, strategic about his appointments? No, you see, no, you, see you have to know the reason why some of these appointments were made. Now, some of these appointments were made even before he was inaugurated. Uh, in INEC, for example, you know, Professor Jagawa is supposed to hand over to the most senior commissioner, who happens to be Haji Amina Zakari, you know, who she is due to retire, I think, in a few weeks or a few months' time, I don't know, before a substantive one is being made. So, you see, these are, these are not deliberate, uh, you know, out of way saying, okay, let me go and pick up a northern. I don't think that is the case. It just happens to be the northerners. Uh, the perception doesn't look very good, I agree. I, told, I wouldn't sit down here and lie to you that it looks very good. It doesn't. Uh, but uh, the president is going to do what is needed to do to make sure that every sector, every hue and creed in this country is uh, well taken care of on merit. When will Nigerians begin to feel it is okay for them to enter a mosque or a church and pray without too much fear? As soon as possible. Naira is in a free fall, and yet we don't have a Minister of Finance. We'll have one soon. Let us take a break. When we return, we speak about teachfornigeria.org, an organization founded by Barista Ismail Ahmed, and which aims to improve the quality of public education on offer in the country, and also discuss the APYF, which is the All Progressives Youth Forum, and what role it should now play since the APC is in power. Don't go away. Rage.